Hey there, I'm not Dan, but in this video we're going to learn about the strength of an acid and base. It's... Welcome back. So we all know that there are strong acids, weak acids, strong bases, and weak bases. But what exactly does that mean? And more importantly, how can we identify a substance as strong or weak? Well, one way to, uh, to figure that out is by testing its pH. So if you take a look at this pH scale right here, as a general rule, uh, the strong acids are found at the zero to three range. Weak acids are three to seven. Weak bases are seven to 11. And finally, the strong bases are 11 to 14. But is that a really good indicator of the strength of a substance? Well, to test out that theory, I have four different substances right here. I've got sulfuric acid, acetic acid, ammonium hydroxide, and sodium hydroxide. And we're gonna zoom in here real quick so that you guys can see the pH and we'll go from there, all right? So let's zoom in. Okay, so here we go. The sulfuric acid, as you can see, is about a pH of one. The acetic acid here is a pH of three. The ammonium hydroxide is a pH of eight. And the sodium hydroxide is a pH that actually goes beyond what this particular key says, so it's about a 13 or 14 on the scale. So you might from that conclude that these two substances here are strong acids, and then this is a weak base, and this is a strong base. However, I want to point out something to you about pH. So I'm going to take the vinegar, pour it into this larger beaker right here, and I'm going to dilute it with a lot of water. To really add a whole bunch of water into that. And now, I'm going to test the pH again, and the last time it was a pH of 3, now it's actually closer to a pH of 4. So what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that pH is actually more of an indication of concentration rather than strength. So how exactly do we measure strength? Well, for that, I need to turn off the lights. Okay, so here we go with a conductivity test. So when we put it into the sulfuric acid, you can clearly see that both lights come on, and it's a pretty strong uh, uh, conductor of electricity there. When we compare that, though, to the vinegar, not quite as much, right? You can see that the lights only kind of barely come on, so not as good of a conductor. The ammonium hydroxide, Pretty much the same results, not a good conductor. And then the sodium hydroxide though, lights are clearly coming on, that is a good strong conductor right there. So what does this tell us? Well it tells us that electrical conductivity is a much better indicator of strength. So what exactly is strong versus weak? Well let me show you. Okay, so when we say that a substance is strong, what we mean is that when it gets put into water, there is what we call complete ionization, meaning it 100% completely splits into ions. And so for a drawing of that, I invite you to check out this right here, which is one of my wonderfully rendered drawings. And as you can see, when you have a substance like hydrochloric acid or even sulfuric acid, when it goes into water, it 100% completely splits. There are no compounds whatsoever, it is all ions. And that is why it is such a good conductor, right? Because ions are necessary for the conduction of electricity. Now compare that with this. This is a weak substance. In a weak substance, there is only partial ionization. Yes, some of the, the compounds do split into ions, and that's why it is still able to conduct electricity, but some of the ions, I'm sorry, some of the compounds stay together as a compound, and they do not split into ions. That is partial ionization. 
So to sum up, pH can be an indicator and kind of get you on the right track and point you towards strong versus weak. But since pH is only a uh, measure of concentration, in order to really determine the strength of a substance, you actually need to check its electrical conductivity. If it's a good conductor, that means there is complete ionization and it will be a strong acid or base. If it's a poor conductor and it doesn't conduct very well, well, that means there is partial ionization and therefore a weak acid or weak base. And that's how it's done. If you have any further questions, please be sure to comment below. Once again, I thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and you'll find that your life is just that much better for it. All right, thanks a lot, guys. I'm not Dan, and neither are you. Check you later. Dude.